With the recent Ryzen 7000 announcement from AMD, it definitely looks like they are going to deliver on their new CPU lineup. However, I did notice that there was a few things that were off in this presentation. And in today, I'm gonna be digging a little bit deeper into those to see why AMD Ryzen 7000 might not be as successful as AMD hopes it will. And I know I might sound like an older guy coming into a party and sort of taking away the punch bowl and turning the lights off. And that's kind of exactly what Jerome Powell's doing to the US economy right now. But there's some important things to talk about. For instance, the starting from price with the motherboards that AMD mentioned. These motherboards are gonna be coming in from $125. And when we consider that you can get a B550 from AMD themselves with their AM4 lineup for $75 delivered, it makes you wonder how much of a price increase are they going to be charging on their B650 license, for example, because this is information that is just not disclosed to the public. Yet every time you go to buy an AM5 CPU, at least with the first generation, you'll have to buy a motherboard, which is a cost that you'll have to pay out of your pocket. So everywhere I asked, whether it was behind the scenes to contacts, even at companies that produce the motherboards, or it was on Twitter to people who are at these events, I got met with deaf ears onto how much a motherboard license is going to cost. Because at this current point in time, if we factor in a $125 cost, and that's currently $50 more expensive than a B550, then for all things considered, someone building a new gaming PC, that CPU cost is then going to look more like $299 going up to $349. Then when it comes to the economics behind AMD in this announcement, let's dig a little further in and see what the two choices AMD had were and which one they chose to go with. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon BFTYC. Links in the description below. So currently in America, by historical definition, the economy is in a recession where they've had two negative quarters of GDP growth. However, more importantly, money is now starting to become tighter in that central banks have started raising interest rates. They've turned off the printers. And in fact, if we were to think of the printers being turned on in 2021, the printers are now essentially in reverse in 2022, especially starting from this month, where the Federal Reserve Chairman has signaled that they are going to do whatever it takes to tame inflation. And that means continuing on with more aggressive tightening. And now you may be wondering, what has this got to do with AM5 and AMD's new Ryzen 7000 series chips launching into the wild? Well, it actually has everything to do with AMD's launch. And that's because this time around, AMD's launching into a much different economic environment to when they were when they launched Ryzen 5000. And in fact, Ryzen 5000 series chips, you couldn't find them at one point even well above MSRP. They were just sold out everywhere, but that actually correlated with a time where the governments were essentially handing out free money via stimulus checks. And for a lot of people, the first place this money ended up going was things like CPUs and graphics cards. And so with this ever-changing economic environment, it means that companies have to generally change with it. And they're faced with, in this case for AMD, two choices. The first choice would be for AMD to actually drop prices and lower their margins and tell shareholders, look, we're going into a difficult period. However, we want to maintain high market share and continue to grow our market share base by offering even more competition than what we have done in the past. However, shareholders probably wouldn't like that option, even though in my opinion, it is the best option for AMD going forward. Imagine if the 7600X was instead $249 rather than $299. I believe offering this CPU at this price point would just actually make for a much better image going forward correlated to the tough economic times that a lot of people are going to be faced with. However, it looks like AMD are ignoring that first option and they're going with option number two. And that is just ramp up the hypermeter to levels never seen before. This includes using benchmarks with instruction sets not supported by your previous generation CPUs, but also by the competitors CPUs. And it also involves zooming in on the differences to make them look like they're much bigger than they actually are. So then we move on to the gaming benchmark numbers 
And here is where they had smart access memory turned on with an RX 6950 XT. And here's where the majority of pro gamers will be using Nvidia graphics cards, not just by the sheer market size that Nvidia has with their GPUs, but also because in a lot of popular multiplayer titles, Nvidia do introduce things like their reflex technology, which competitive gamers do take advantage of. But also this time around, their instructions per cycle uplift of 13% is impressive on the surface, though when we dig a little bit deeper, they are basing this on a 22 benchmark geo mean average. However, in the past when they've measured IPC, for instance, even going back to Zen 3, they've done this on the basis of a 25 geo mean benchmark and also this time around there's a lot more games included in the benchmark some of which skew the results heavily in favor of that 13 percent where i feel like if you're comparing instructions per cycle especially versus your previous generation ryzen cpus you should be comparing them on the same instruction sets so then we look at the Cinebench score and that's up 9%. And I usually find the Cinebench score itself does give you a good representation on how much IPC has really increased. So if I was to guess, they are overstating the IPC a little bit, but it's nothing to take away from a massive feat that they're gaining from the TSMC 5 nanometer, where this looks to be like where a huge amount of gains is coming from the sheer uplifting clock speeds on these CPU architectures. However, when we look at these clock speeds a little bit more in depth, we are seeing a lot of up two in the marketing. And so the biggest concern I have on day one, especially with these reviews that are gonna be coming out to the public, is that is there going to be a difference in silicon quality that reviewers receive versus say someone will be going out and buying off the retail shelves? Though I feel like the up two advertising here really is one of those things where if you guys are looking to buy one of these CPUs, definitely look at what you're going to get from retail samples as opposed to samples that are going to be seeded out to the press because the press could be getting what's known as golden samples in that they're the best version of that CPU and they could clock a few hundred megahertz higher and give out performance figures which the average person may actually not get if they go out and buy the average piece of silicon off the shelves aka the retail sample. Furthermore, during the presentation, AMD were talking about DDR5 6000 megahertz being the sweet spot for these CPUs, yet they're only guaranteeing 5200 effective megahertz on their Ryzen 7950X, for example, and even the Ryzen 5 7600X. And so that means if someone goes out and buys a 6000 megahertz kit of memory for their new Ryzen 7000 CPUs, they're not guaranteed those speeds. They could come into issues where the memory kit just simply doesn't work. Though the final concern with AM5 and Ryzen 7000 is the DDR5 itself. The cost associated with this DDR5 memory is still significantly higher than DDR4 memory. And in fact, a lot of people still have really good enthusiast grade kits of DDR4, and they're not gonna be able to utilize that DDR4 memory, even though it would be perfectly fine if the new CPU supported it. You wouldn't really lose any performance in gains, especially if you had some of the really high speeds, low CL DDR4 memory. I'm sure you wouldn't see really any differences between DDR4 and DDR5, especially for gaming and content creation, which is where AMD is positioning these new mainstream AM5 CPUs. Though those DDR5 costs coupled in with the higher motherboard costs really make it so that a lot of people who are excited for AM5 are going to load this stuff into the cart and then get ready to check out and realize just how expensive the whole kit is going to end up costing. For instance, you may see that that price of the 7950X has actually dropped $100 from the previous 5000 series 5950X base cost. However, if you then factor in an X670 motherboard, one with a really solid VRM, and then maybe you wanna get 64 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, this whole kit could end up costing you nearly $2,000. Same with the 7600X. Say for instance, you get a $150 motherboard, 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5 memory, even the lower speed stuff, and then a $300 CPU, you're gonna to get to check out and realize, hey, this is gonna cost me over $600 just for the bare bones. And that's not even mentioning the fact that none of these CPUs come with included coolers, which is another cost that AMD is then going to be passing on to the end consumer. And of course, the high inflation would be partly due for a lot of these hidden cost cutting measures that AMD has implemented. But that being said, the margins on their quarterly reports are actually higher than they've ever been in the last decade. And although AMD as a business do want to raise their margins and ultimately their profits, they do have to realize at the same time, the user base that is enabling those higher margins and profits, aka the average consumer like you or I, our profit margins in our day-to-day -day living is dropping significantly. 
So with those talking points out of the way, my first concern is with Ryzen 7000 is that the prices are going to actually be very hard for the general market to absorb. Based off the economic conditions that a lot of economies are currently going through, AMD I feel like is going to have a tough time selling this new architecture as a whole package, especially when DDR5 and the motherboard costs are going to be quite high. The second point in relation to that is actually the US dollar itself. This is something that a lot of people aren't talking about. The DXY is at really high levels right now, making it expensive for these CPUs in a lot of other countries by the US. So for instance, you may traditionally have had in Australia a Ryzen 5 3600 coming in at 250 Aussie dollars when that was launched, but now you may have this CPU coming in at 400 or even 450 Aussie dollars. And so someone in the past that has traditionally liked buying a six core 12 thread from AMD and they feel like it's more than enough for their needs and they want to upgrade to that newer six core are going to find themselves scratching their head at just how much the price has increased in their local currency. Now, of course, that DXY factor is out of AMD's control, but it does go to show that being more competitive, I feel, is a better choice for AMD. And with that in mind, if you are a conscious consumer looking for the best deal, you may find that Ryzen 7000 series chips may drop in prices sooner than later. Though the second thing to talk about is for me as an enthusiast personally, and this is the direction that AMD has gone with this AM5 launch, or they're going to go with this launch. And it's looking like even though the performance numbers are looking better, the actual pricing in the whole situation is remaining the same. And that is, I feel like AMD with this new launch is kind of turning a blind eye to the base that built their company up. And that is the value orientated user. There's no four core eight threaded option to be found. There's no real budget line of motherboards. There's no DDR4 support. And so I feel like they're really just going for more of an exclusive high performance, high price base with the launch of the Ryzen 7000 series, which if we compare that to even when Ryzen, the first generation was launched and we had the Ryzen 5 1400, we had the Ryzen 7 1800X, the Ryzen 5 1600, there was just so many different choices for users, whether they had big pockets or whether they were just value conscious and looking for the best deal. It seemed like AMD covered all bases, even on the motherboard side with X370, B350 and also A320. And even in the future, you could get those, even to this date, those $50 A320 motherboards and couple them with things like the Ryzen 5 3600 and the included cooler. And you just had such good value for money, whether it's for gaming or budget content creation. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, I look forward to giving you guys coverage of this new launch. Do let us know in the comment section below what you think of the uh, concerns I voiced in today's video. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. But another thing is too, is the current AMD CPU prices on AM4 is getting really cheap. For instance, I'm seeing Ryzen 5 5600s coming under 150 bucks. I'm seeing the motherboards, they're cheap as well. And also with DDR4 memory being as cheap as it is, I think if you're waiting for the latest and greatest AM5, it wouldn't be a bad option to see what you can currently get in terms of what AMD is offering already on the market. And even if we look at the current best gaming CPU from AMD, the 5800X3D, that's actually under the price of the 7700X that AMD's announced at 399. Now AMD did cut down this CPU by $50 as well, but perhaps they knew that the Ryzen 7700X is going to perform not as good as the 5800X 3D. And so that leaves them with room in the future to release a 7800X 3D and have that perform even better, which actually, now that I've heard the rumors, I'm thinking that that's gonna be the CPU. If you are a pure gamer and you love gaming, that might be the CPU to wait for if you wanna get on AM5, whether you're a competitive gamer or whether you're looking for just simply the best FPS possible from AMD. Now, of course, the other competitor in the race, Intel, they do have their Raptor Lake, which is going to be announced the day apparently all this is going to be launched. So that'll be interesting to see what they come up with. 
And when it comes to that presentation, I'm gonna be combing through with the same slice of skepticism that we combed through in AMD's presentation here today. So if you guys are enjoying these tech videos, be sure to hit that like button. Also hit that sub button and ring that bell to get the tech videos the moment they drop. And also we've got the question of the day here before I get on out of here, which comes from Jin. And they ask, possible to do similar kind of video when Raptor Lake arrives? Now they're referring to our B660 Riptide motherboard review that we did, where we looked at that motherboard and it was coming in with some serious value for money. Not only the fact that the motherboard itself is gonna be a good price point, but also it's got an external clock generator, which means that you can overclock the budget Intel CPUs, like the 12400F for example, and then you can extract money without having to go with those K licenses. But if it's any advice for Intel, I think it's time for them to start dropping their K licenses and also their other jargon and allow their chips to be freely overclocked too. Anyhow guys, I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. As we launch into AM5, we expect to see over 15 Expo memory kits in market at launch. Offered by the leading partners in high performance memory overclocking and pushing the limits of DDR5 up to 6400 data.